Okay, I'm gonna explain what the cheat sheets and the folders are all about. Um, you're gonna get quite a few cheat sheets. Some of them will be half sheets, some of them will be full sheets. There's gonna be things like for our equipment, graduated cylinders and, um, I don't even know, uh, triple beam balance, explaining how to use all that equipment. Um, obviously, not just hand the paper and you have to figure it out, we'll use it. But let's say it's been a little while and you haven't had to measure anything and now it's time you need to use a triple beam balance. Uh -oh. You can use that paper as a refresher. It has all the information you need to be successful. This hypothesis cheat sheet, let's say six months from now, we are doing a lab and you have to write a hypothesis and you're like, dang, it's been a few little bit since we had to do any of these hypotheses. I can't remember what I'm allowed to do and what I'm not allowed to do with a good hypothesis. Pull out the cheat sheet and look at it. It saves you from having, hey, okay, I don't need the comments. It saves you from having to go back through all of your notes, find the right section, find the right area, and find the hypothesis writing info. It's right there. So you're probably going to get like six or seven different cheat sheets throughout um, a lot of them here at the beginning of the year. So it's something that you keep all year long. At the end of the year, you're welcome to keep the papers, but I will collect the folder back from you because I buy those and it costs me money. So I will collect those back from you and I will give you a piece of candy for returning it to me. Oh, at the end now. of the year. All right. So. Here's what we're gonna do. Anytime you need to find information about a hypothesis, this is the first place you go, all right? You are the first person to evaluate your work, so let's say you have to write a hypothesis, write it, and then use this to kind of check yourself, right? You don't need to have me come over and do it or somebody next to you, you can do it yourself, all right? So that's always a good thing to kind of leave it in your hands, let you be the person that has control over you know, like checking over your work. Um, okay, so it says here's the format, and this is what was in our notes yesterday. Okay. So here is our set format. A little too big. All right, so you're gonna have the words if and then. So we call this the if-then format. Right, you guys with me? Put the post-its away. Thank you. Um, this means that every hypothesis is gonna have the words if and then. The very first word is always gonna be if. Now I can't tell you what word then will be, but it's gonna be in there, all right? So here is where you start. So if I put the word if, and then you write the situation, right? If I use tide in game on grass stain on my pant legs, then, here's my prediction, the tide will get this grass stain out the best. That's it. It doesn't have to be fancy. It doesn't have to be elaborate. It doesn't have to be like a whole paragraph. It is one sentence, which is a statement, which ends in a period, which is what we talked about yesterday. And this tells me a little bit about it. Do you know what I'm gonna test based on this little situation? Tide, gain, grass stain on pants. Do I know all the details? Not really, but I know that somehow I'm gonna be using those two things on that grass stain on that material. And that's all you really need to know for the situation. You'll get to the details and the procedure of the experiment. And then did you hear me say I think? Or I predict? Mm -mm. Because we don't use I think. We don't use I predict. And these aren't my rules. This is like science rules. Okay? I didn't come up with them. I just follow them. The state? What? Yeah, the state? Don't they tell you what to teach? Oh, okay. The state does tell me what to teach, but what, what the, like, Science has its own kind of rules and laws and things like that to follow. This is one kind of normal thing that all scientists use when they're writing a hypothesis, is this format. So the state didn't necessarily say it, but scientists do, and so we're going to be good scientists and follow what they say. Um, it is not a question. 
So it should not end in a question mark, okay? Um, don't be wishy-washy with your prediction. So don't say, it tied most of the time, probably is usually gonna be okay. It's kind of wishy-washy, right? Yeah, we don't want to say wishy-washy. We want to be like, bam, that's what we're saying is going to happen. Tide. Tide's getting that out. Do I really know if Tide's going to do it best? Yep. No. That's why I'm doing the experiment. Okay. Um, and be careful that you don't just restate your original question. All right? So it's not just turning, um, you know, your question into a statement. You have to follow all of these things and make sure that you don't do these things. So, is it picky? Kind of, right? It is kind of picky. Here's an example. I don't know why I have this as Christmas. Apparently, maybe when I first made it up, it was Christmas time? I don't know. Um, anyways, I observed that elves love candy canes. This makes me ask a question. Think of our song, make an observation, ask a question, form a hypothesis. That's where we're at, right? So made an observation, asked a question, do elves like all types of candy or just candy canes? Candy Don't know. I decide to test this. So now I need to write a hypothesis. So here it is. If I hire 20 elves to wrap my Christmas presents and I give them the choice of either being paid with candy canes or M&Ms, then the majority of the elves will choose to be paid with candy canes. Here's my situation. Could you close your eyes and imagine 20 elves? being offered candy canes as payment or M&Ms as payment yeah. to wrap my presents. Yeah. That's the situation. Do I know every detail? Do I know how many presents? Do I know how many candy canes they'll receive or how many M&Ms? I don't need to say all the details. I just need to give you a general idea of what to expect. My prediction. Do you know what I believe is gonna happen based on my prediction? What do I think they're all gonna want paid with? Candy canes. Candy canes. Do I know that for sure? No. That's why I'm doing the experiment. Right? So remember, you write a hypothesis so you have something to test, and it helps you to explain or answer that original question. So my hypothesis has to help me answer this question. And it does. Okay? This is your go-to place for writing a hypothesis. You look at this cheat sheet and you check yourself, read it and evaluate, change it if you need to.